Hi, this is Peggy from War. So today I'm joined by two amazing professionals. Only one is from CIBC. I will let you guess which one. Uh, so we have, uh, we have Kuram Khalil, who is the COO and the CIO at CARI. And we have Saim Zuberi, who is the CTO of CARI. So thank you so, so much, guys, for being with us today. It's, it's great to have both of you. Oh, it's Thanks a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So uh, let's start with you, Saim. Would you like to give us a bit of uh, visibility on your professional journey, but also why, uh, why John Carey? Okay. Um, so um, my professional journey begins, um, I did my engineering back in 2003, uh, worked with the telecommunication industry and then the financial industry and then as, a, then as an SI. Uh, came to Canada back in 2017, have been working onshore, offshore, um, as a consultant and building different kind of solution and product for different banks around the world. Um, I, um, um, it's a funny story that how I joined Gary, I was basically lying on the sofa, relaxing. It was start of COVID. And I get a call from Koram that, Saim, do you want to build a mobile application for a startup? And I was like, uh, that shouldn't be difficult. He said, it's a credit card. I said, that shouldn't be difficult. And then he kept on giving me more and more and more details. And it kept on, uh, it turned into a complete platform. So it was a, a it just draw me in actually, or uh, I think Khoram's charms draw me in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't realize that you knew each other. There, there is so many, uh, you know, degrees of connection between all of the members of the team. I love that. That's, that's wonderful. So, so Khoram, do you want to tell us more and, you know, please exude your charm so we can uh, hire <laughs> everyone who's watching that video. So, so you can tell that when you're talking to your friend. So Simon is a very good friend of mine. <laughs> so he's been very kind with his words. But, but yeah, so my journey is uh, kind of similar with like Simon. Started my career in technology. So I did my MBA, my master's in computer sciences, all the certifications that you can ever think of. Um, and then I started my fintech back in 2000. Um, then Y2K happened, made a lot of money, and then everything failed after Y2K. Um, and then I pivoted from, so I worked with Oracle SAP initially in my career for the last, first 10 years. And then after that, I joined all financial. So I worked with Manulife, CIBC, Bank of Montreal. Um, oh my Lord. Like, um, and then, and then of course, Kerry and uh, sorry, yeah, Scotia Bank and then Kerry. So I've been I've, like, I've been very fortunate that first 10 years, everything technology, uh, remaining like 10, 15 years, everything business. Uh, and then even in business roles, I was already, always in product, technology, product, technology, and delivery. And that was when I met you, Peggy, at CIBC, managing head of payments for all delivery stuff. So yeah, so I had a knack of delivery. I have a knack of payments. So so when, and Jason and I are very good friends as well. So when Jason called me and said, Kuram, build me a team. So the first person I called was Saim. And the second person I called was Salil <laughs> to come and help me out. And it's been a, it's been a pleasure so far. That's that's wonderful. I, you know, it's 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 so great to see that you guys are, are all connected. And I didn't realize saying that you immigrated that recently. You know, yeah. uh, your accent is better than mine, even if I've been there twenty years. So you know, that's, uh, <laughs> let's let's put it aside. Uh, so so first question for you, saying you mentioned actually, uh, you know, the platform, and you know, when Kuram was uh, giving you a call and trying to entice you, but it kept on growing. So I think it's a trend we see very much with fintech now compared to 10, 15 years ago where they were just, uh, you know, just point solution. Now their entire ecosystem and platform. Would you like to elaborate a bit on that for Carrie? So, um, so when we sit down and analyze the product, um, we have to take a step back and analyze the problem. The problem is pertaining to small businesses not having enough credit not being able to manage their accounting properly. Uh, when they get audited, they are not able to provide the necessary documentation. Everything gets into and becomes a complex um, um, journey for the business. Mm -hmm. So what, what we are trying to address is the core problem that a business can focus on their speciality and everything else we take care of. And that is how we have created a, a platform that has multiple small components, multiple small products 
that gel in together and mm -hmm. then give a universal experience to the business. Yeah. And that is, uh, that is how we have tried and we have partnered with multiple uh, third parties as well. So that if they have a speciality, why reinvent the wheel and bring it, to, bring it together and nicely gel into the system. Yeah, and you know, integrating makes so much sense. And very, yeah. it's funny you say that because very often technologies they love to rebuild, you know. <laughs> but you know, that's not where the value is. And, and and you pointed it correctly. The challenge with SMBs is that they're extremely underserved. Yes. By financial services, so you you're addressing such a huge pain point. And See, uh, I think there are about a million businesses out there um, in Canada alone that are absolutely underserved, don't get the due attention from the banks, don't get the due attention from the investors. So we, uh, I think the whole team is of the view that how can we help them grow and grow with them. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And I'm going to jump to you, Kuram, and uh, I'd love to talk about the data strategy you have, because that's also another competitive advantage. Yeah, absolutely, Peggy. So I'll just uh, piggyback what uh, Sam said. So my family owns a small business in Canada. My it's, it's actually my younger sister who owns it, uh, and I've I've seen her struggle like throughout. Uh, because see, every business is a little bit different than the other business, even if you're in the same sector. So what happens is that when they go to a big bank and ask them that, hey, we want to do this a little bit differently, they say no. This is like standard cookie cutter approach for all businesses. Whereas with Carry, the way Simon is building it uh, with the product vision that we have, it's like we, we can pivot. So if a small business comes to us, hey, we want a different set of reporting from you, we, we can. So that's actually your key advantage that we can pivot on the fly. We are very flexible and we can focus to your needs. And hence, that is where the data strategy comes in that like we truly believe that data is one thing that's going to differentiate it just because getting more insights on the customers, but also providing them the real value and the real feedback. So since we are so nimble, we are building, and Simon is helping, helping me build a data strategy as well. We are trying to put data together in a way that we can actually have different set of reportings as per se sector. Mm -hmm. And the same data is gonna feed into our adjudication model. As you know, that we are very focused on um, minority-based businesses, uh, from the adjudication point of view, women entrepreneurs. So my sister is an entrepreneur, so I bounce off of ideas to buy your vintage project. So we are doing this, uh, Alice. What do you think? Uh, would that work? And and she has been great uh, helping us out. But yeah, exactly. So we're going to utilize data for a few things. The first thing is that we want to make it super fast, uh, so that data can be auditable. We we are if ever we are audited by a big bank or with whoever our issuing bank is, we are ready for it. The data can be spun off in so many different areas yeah. of insights, uh, also for internal organizations as well as external organizations. So if a big organization has a book of business that they want to run business on our platform, I can spin off reporting on a very portfolio level. Um, and also we are trying to use the best technology ever uh, to do all the data set. I, I've been fortunate in my career, I worked with Scotia Bank and some of the other big banks on data strategy for like 10, seven years, a very big team. So, so I know at least what not to do. And, and, and yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, so, so in our strategy, we, myself, Syme, and Salil helps us out as well. We are trying to make, and oh, sorry, I, I must mention that Vic Mishito, who was a VP and head of all data analytics at Scotia Bank. He's on our uh, on our advisory board as well, advising on our data. So we are hoping that our data strategy is going to be truly a differentiating factor uh, mm -hmm. with an Excel on not only the business insight, but our profitability in the future. Yeah. That's amazing. And I love the fact that, uh, you know, you're integrating user or potential or future user feedback as you're yeah. building the platform. And, and that's something we couldn't say enough, the fact that you enable, you know, uh, minorities, because it's so difficult to yeah. have access. It's more difficult, we all know that, for, you know, women, uh, visible minorities to have access to financing. So not yeah. having a credit score, a traditional credit score, personal guarantee, but really adjudicating on yeah. the real flow, that is amazing. You know, I'm looking at that and I'm like, that's, that's wonderful. But anyway, go back to Saim. Um, you have a distributed team. Uh, it's not just because it's COVID and everything is distributed, but you, you, you have a healthy dose of people onshore, offshore, nearshore. What's your secret sauce? How do you balance that? 
See, um, when we started building this particular platform, um, we started looking for talent. And even though there is a lot of talent available, um, new people coming in every year um, in Canada with new immigrants and all that, um, but it's a hunting pool for the US as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So the giants like Facebook, Stripe and all these major companies, all good talent get picked up uh, by these large corporations. And um, as a startup, you have to be nimble. So we decided on a strategy whereby product uh, remains onshore and then the development is offshore. And then there's a bridge between the two organizations and uh, somebody actually converts that product vision into the platform. Um, it is not easy. Uh, it is not easy getting up uh, four in the morning to actually talk to the team. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the day doesn't end at six or <laughs> till 6 p.m. <laughs> because that is uh, till we are working. So um, it has it has a long arc. And, but um, that is what has worked for us. And I think it is a strategy for most of the startups uh, should be adopting now. Mm -hmm. um, it's great to have your own team, um, but it is uh, OPEX intensive. But at the same time, um, the talent pool outside of Canada is uh, is pretty vast. So you can have teams all around the world. And COVID has made us realize that you don't have to be in the same office space to actually work together, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And you I love that idea because you you also go in different geographies for people where, you know, a job, a great job in a odd fintech can change their life. I'm not oh, going to the case in Canada, but more in some geographies than other. So, so there is a very important impact aspect of that as well. Yeah, and um, not only that, they bring a different mindset to the table as well because exactly. they are used to doing things differently. Mm -hmm. We can teach them that this is how our processes work. And they teach us that this is, this is the workaround that we have built to, uh, since we ha don't have the resources, exactly. we'll build this workaround. So, and this is cheaper. So that, 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 yeah. is, so, uh, that is something that we are leveraging over here. Yeah, you know, like this, this street smart, but also I'm sure you have a team with younger people uh, you know, I'm in my mid 40s, I have to admit that, uh, working with people who are in their 20s, 30s, who look at things differently than, than me. So my average so team value. age is 23. Yes, yeah, so, you know, that's yeah. that. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they, they, they probably blow your mind with some things you don't, you don't see, you don't see with, uh, I think the, we're all from the same generation, the 70s, you know, so it's, it's good to have a different, uh, you know, people who are slightly younger. I am getting old. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought Simon meant I was 23. But I mean, you said, and it's like, oh, you it's like you're too young. You're going to bring the average down. That doesn't work. Okay. So thank you so much, Saint. Okay, I want to, to finish, Karam, with you uh, talking about innovation. Uh, it, it, it seems to be really at the heart of Carrie. It seems to be in the DNA. Do you want to tell us more about that? Yeah, exactly. And um, again, I'll, I'll start off with, again, just the tail end of Simon's conversation about offshoring. So we are not even looking at to innovate faster at a faster pace. We not only need to innovate for our development team, for even of some of our core functions, like our IVR functions, mm -hmm. our call center functions, our fraud management functions. So all of those functions, we are thinking about outsourcing it to, uh, to another country. Um, so hence that we can innovate and we can have a different perspective from different countries uh, because we truly want, uh, John's vision is we truly want to be a global organization. Mm -hmm. so to be global, we need to have global support. We need to have global structure around. So I'm, I work with Sam closely on understanding how the outsourcing would work, how to set up the corporation outside of Canada and how do we get the most benefit of the people. But, but innovation is, 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 is really interesting to me because in, in my previous roles, all of my roles have been in very, very big programs. So I've seen like, like, I, like I've been a product manager, I've been a data analyst, I've been all those roles, but those are deep roles. But when you look things at the very top, like across different industries, that is where you start to like make connections. So yeah, I did that in that e-health project and how does it help me in this project? Mm -hmm. So those, those connections to me and with a great team inside like Chris, John, 
even Jason and Steve, uh, I'm sure like once you talk to them um, in an interview, they're amazing guys. Like you talk to them and you like just brainstorm ideas as friends. And I think that is the true essence of the innovation. So the, I'm also heading a little bit of HR uh, at this point because it's part of operations. So that is a core competency. So when we hire people or we hire for talent, we always ask them like questions that, uh, my, so no one, uh, everyone has a right to say anything in our meetings, right? So literally it's not like one of those, remember those big bank meetings, like it's very scripted. You cannot say this in front of an EVP and we only can say this. In our, it's like, like John lets us speak our mind. Everyone has a say on the table. And again, of course, we have to be cognizant of John's time, but I just want to make sure from the culture point of view that innovation is in our gene. So we continue to innovate, we continue to challenge. I, when I present my deck to Sian and to some of my other team members, I say, start, start because I'm ready for your challenge. So challenge me on everything which I've said. Because that's how we innovate as a team. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be like, I said so, and then just do it. None of that. So we, we are trying to create a culture of innovation. And the same culture of innovation, Peggy, we want to move it to our offshore teams as well. Mm -hmm. So the biggest challenge for us is that how does John's vision translates into an innovative vision and translates into our offshore teams? So that's going to be our step two that we'll be working very closely with our partners, even with our vendors. So we have an innovation touch point on a quarterly basis with all of our key partners. We talk about innovation, we see what's in the pipeline. I'm very enthusiastic on crypto. I don't know if we're gonna ever make money in it. Uh, people have different views on it, but, 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 but again, like it just interests us as a team, as a core team that signed myself. We are always looking to innovate. We are always looking for ideas. And that's our hope with this, uh, with this next race and with our customers as well. Please give us ideas, tell us, how, what, how we are doing it, give us some ideas. Uh, remember everything that you guys are gonna say in the social platform anywhere is gonna be accounted for. Sign myself and the rest of the team at Kerry, we'll make sure that your requirements are fulfilled and we are innovative and competitive in the, in the industry. That's a great message. And I like that you, know, you started with, okay, we're looking at innovation in every area. It's very often we're just thinking innovation in product. But you know what? You want to also look at innovation in your core functions, as you're saying, the fraud, the underwriting, this type of thing, where usually companies tend to be very traditional there and they have a super neat front end. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and you know what, Peggy, there is a huge case on uh, the, uh, the Britain's uh, bicycle team, if you, if you ever read it. Like, they were last in the league for many years. And when and they were so bad, that people would not even give them bike them to race in a bike uh, in, in any of the major race. But how they did was that they changed everything about themselves. So innovated on the seats, they greased their tires, they used those special uh, like t-shirts for their bicyclers so that they are more aerodynamic, they change their helmets. So every small thing counts. Exactly. Uh, we want, like it's an F1, if an F1 race, right? So we want our customer to be driving, our, I want our customers to be Lewis Hamilton. So for them to win every time, we want to make sure that everyone is pitching in and we are innovating at every aspect and not just on one area and uh, not doing on the other area. That's, that's wonderful. Well, thank you to both of you. You know, like that was super energizing. You know, like I really, really loved, you know, how you complement each other and, you know, your way of thinking. It's, it's really lovely. So thank you so, so much for, for taking the time to speak with me today. No, it's, it's, it's a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you.